Hi beauty friends, how are we? Are we all okay? I hope you all are. I hope we're all doing well and you're all fit and healthy. I'm beading away. <laughs> I've been beading away. I've been making some samples um, to show you. So <clears throat> this is what's called the zigzag or commonly known as zigzag. Zigzag pattern. And you can see in this one I've got three different coloured beads. Now they're only subtle, obviously other than that one. That one's evidently um, a nice silvery colour. And then you've got a smaller grey crystal colour and then a lighter grey crystal. But together they look beautiful and on, they are gorgeous. So the closures I've made are using buttons, <clears throat> so no clasps, we don't need anything like that, so a nice little button with a nice hole at the end where, ooh, where our button will go through without a problem. Okay, so I've done that one, I've done three different colours again, using um, golds and bronzy colours and the beads. Don't they look superb? They look so cool. And all so glistening. They look fabulous in the sunlight. And an all the same colour one. Again in golds. So I'm not normally a goldy person but this I would wear. It is so nice with a nice button. Very simple to do. And the little closure there I'm going to show you, so don't worry. And again, this one I made using black and silver. Well, it's like a, a grey, a grey silver, believe it or not. <clears throat> it's the same colour as that one. I'm just going to show you, you know, that gets lost in that bracelet, as in, you can tell that there's different tones there, but evidently this one really shines out. Look at the black, all glistening, gorgeous. Beautiful. So nice. And I could see that, I know I go on about denims, it's because I've got a denim jacket that I absolutely love. And that would look so cool with jeans and a denim jacket. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you then what you need to make this bracelet. Very, very simple. Now, you will need some of this cord. It's Chinese knotting cord. And when it comes to you, I bought this pack off the internet. Um, it comes in like these twisty dreams. Now as soon as you cut <clears throat> and take your length, it goes everywhere. So what I tend to do is cut and then wrap onto a piece of card and that will keep it nice and um, uh, untangled for you. But be prepared, as soon as you cut it seems to like to go into a bird's nest. Yep, into a bird's nest so it takes a little bit of time. But it's something to do it in front of the TV on a on an evening or when you've got a, a spare 20 minutes or so. <laughs> it does take ages. Uh, you might have a better way of doing it than me. Who knows? So you will need some Chinese knotting cord. Or you could use cotton cord or whatever you have available. You will need some beads. So I'm going to use these larger beads today. These are a 6 by 8 I believe. Let me just get our Percy out. <clears throat> or oh, are they a, a 6 mil? Eight. So 8 mil that way. And 6 mil that way. Yes, yeah, so I was right. 8 by 6. So it's 8 mil going 
across the bead that way and 6mm going across the bead that way, okay? So you'll be needing those and then I'm going to use this whitey colour if I can get them off my strand Oh, fling them all over your desk and again, I think these are the same let's just check, yeah another 8 by 6 correct oh I'm doing well 8 by 6s okay now as in these ones I've used different sorts of buttons <coughs> as closures I thought well if guys haven't got buttons or anything they want to use like buttons a nice big bead would do so I'm using this great big bead which is 15mm by 15mm so it's a 15mm round bead okay but if you've got a nice bead that you want to use then go ahead and get that or if you've got buttons get some buttons going and what else do we need some wire now why do we need wire because our thread can fray and it does and it can, you know, it frays and can go nasty. So what I like to do is I have cut myself off about 8 inches of um, wire. Turn it in half. Cut again. So you just need two pieces of wire. What else do we need? I like to have a cocktail stick on hand or if you've got a beadle or um, um, a spare bit of stiff wire then that's that's fine. Just something like that. It helps us to knot our... bring our knots close up to where we need them to be, okay? So, so either that or a bit of, like I've got a bit of spare wire here as well, you'll need a bit of spare wire or a cocktail stick or a bead or the end of your crocheting hook, whatever, whatever you've got to hand. Do we need anything else? No, I think that's it. So get your cording that you're going to use, get your beads. I'm using two colours today, but you don't have to. If you've got a lot of one colour, then you go ahead and, and sort those out. And a bead or button, whatever you would like. The design is yours. Oh yes, of course. Jane, you're missing out the vital ingredient in between our, be our beads. And in between our beads, we're going to be using split rings. So split rings, what are they? Split rings are one step on from a jump ring. <clears throat> so if I bring you the jump ring, our jump ring is one coil with our split. And a split ring has two coils. Okay. But if you haven't got split rings and you've but you do have quite a lot of um, jump rings then you can go ahead and use jump rings but you will need a larger size you want it about a 6 a 6 or 7 maybe a little bit bigger about a 7 mil. let's just have a look on Percy see if I can measure these accurately or not yeah a 7 mil. A 7mm um, jump ring if you don't have any split rings. Okay guys, so get your bits and bobs together and we'll be right back and let's get beading and creating. Woohoo! Okay, have you got all your bits and bobs together? So I've just gone off and cut while I was waiting for you <laughs> about 14 inches um, about 14 inches of my cord okay so what do we need the wire for 
So we need to be able to pass our thread th through our beads, don't we? And the easiest way to do this, I find, is by making ourselves a little needle. Now I'm just going to bring you in a little bit closer. Ooh, just so you can see what I'm doing. Don't look at my nails. I painted them fresh and then because I was making samples, it's chipped and worn off. But hey, it is what it is. Okay, so we're just going to pop our thread across our wire. Pinching the thread really close and onto that wire so it holds it tight. Pulling the wire so it's um, like that. Pinching nice and tight with our nail on our on our finger. And then we're just going to twist the wire together, giving it a nice twist. Now it doesn't need to be pretty or anything like that. We're not going to be using it in our finished item of jewellery. We're just going to use it to... Um, Now then, see what happened there? It, it was coming out. So we need to close that little eye that we've made. So, using some pliers, just on where the eye is, I'm not sure whether that's showing up on camera or not. We're just going to pinch and try our best to close that wire up. Now you might need to turn your wire around and your pliers around. That's got it there now I think. No, it's still loose. If you can hear a siren in the back, I live near, not far away from a clay pit where they mine the Cornish clay and the sirens going off so we may they may be doing a blasting shortly which yesterday they did one and the house had a bit of a shake caused a bit of a nerve tremor for some unknown reason i'm having it do you know i've been doing this all these bracelets this morning without a problem and now i'm on camera it went Flatten. Have I got it now? Yes, I've got it. Right. <coughs> and I find that I did try using um, big eyed needles, but I ended up breaking them. As some of the bead holes, um, some of the bead hole. I mean, this has got a nice hole on it, but some of the beads, the uh, hole was quite closed, and it just broke my big eyed needle. So I thought, what can I use? I know wire. So that is what I am using. So I'm just going to show you again then, pinching it nice and close, and giving our wire a twist. Now remember what I said, it doesn't need to be pretty, <coughs> it's not going to be on show, it's just to hold um, and make it strong. If you can hear that yelping, it's the dog barking and yelping because the postman's probably been. <sighs> Dear me. Okay, and then just squash again the end. Lovely jubbly, and that's holding everything in place. <coughs> now you can trim these down if you wanted to, I might just take a little bit off. And just where that nook is there, I'm just going to take that off. So 
I'm just going to trim this one down as well. <coughs> and just that up there. It's going to widen you out now so you can see what I'm doing. I was a bit close, wasn't I? Or you were. Right. Okay, to start off then, we're just going to thread on our bead. So in my case, I'm threading on a big bead. You might be putting on a button. But the technique is exactly the same because we're just going to bring down and make sure we've got everything centred. And then we're going to tie a knot to hold our bead in place. Okay, so for that we're just going to simply wrap it round. There's our loop. Pop the big bead through the loop. Remember we talked about the cocktail stick or whatever you've got in place. We're going to hold, get myself in position, we're going to hold the cocktail stick or your chosen implement and we're going to bring that knot down into place. Like so. I want that to be a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to pop my cocktail stick through. Oh my word, now I've got to be in here. Oh, it's too much. Oh my god. I'm going to have to pause you. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Oh my word, a bee. It, well, it was, a, it was a, a wasp. It wasn't a bee. It was a wasp after all that. I'm really petrified in case I get stung. <laughs> right. So, now that I've composed myself, let's get back to it. So, I've stuck my uh, cocktail stick in just to bring the knot a bit closer up to my uh, my uh, large bead or if you're a but if you're using a button onto yours okay. and there we have our bead attached right, here comes the fun bit then now I'm going to take off because these beads are bigger than the ones that I've used here and it does I can't give you exact numbers because it's all according to how big your wrist is. Now I've got approximately a six and three quarter inch. Let's just check. Let's just have a little look see together. Well, I've got a I don't want it tight, so six and a half inch um wrist size. And if you take a look at this, this fits me beautifully because I like a little bit of play. I don't want things too, too tight. I want to be able, you know, I want it to be a little bit slack. So let's just have a little look. These are four mil bees. Let's just count two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight, forty, forty-two, forty-two. 45 so 45 beads on that one and then two for the little, oh, excuse me for the little dangly bits on the end so we'll take off 20 of, of each color two four six eight ten two four six eight ten So we've got 20 of the white beads and let's get our crystal beads. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. And then we can count along the further that we get on, okay? And we'll get um some of our split rings together. Okay, I'm going to bring you in just a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, 
So we've got our bead on or your button, whatever you are using. And we're just going to start off then by popping on, it doesn't matter which way you start, just by popping on one of our beads, bringing it down, putting our two ends together, popping on our split ring and dropping it down. So this is what we shall have. So we put our white bead on this string. So we need to get the other one and put our clear bead on or whatever colour bead you are using. If you're using all the same, that's absolutely fine. Do what you like. This will also work well with round beads as well. It doesn't have to be the rondelle shape. It will still work with um, round beads. So if you've got pearls or wooden beads or whatever, and there's the start of our bracelet. So now we know that this side is our white, this side is our clears. Adding on a clear bead, a, a white bead. On a split ring. <coughs> crystal bead, bringing our ends together and putting on a split ring, and this is how it will look. So all we're going to do then, I'm just going to get myself adjusted and comfortable. Oh, that's it. I'm sitting a bit too far away from my desk. And we're going to add on our next bead, which is the white bead. Can you see how it works? If I was to slacken it up so you could see. Let's bring you in a little bit. Just because I like you to see what's going on and how the pattern progresses. So we can see that our cording is going on the outside of each bead, can't we? With a split ring in between. But when we pull those beads up together, it causes our beads to zigzag. Hence why it's called the zigzag bracelet. So let's carry on then and we'll We'll just check ourselves as we go along. Widen you out a little bit now, showing you that otherwise you'll miss. Sorry if I'm going in and out a little bit. Let's just bring them over here so I'm not crossing over myself all the time. <clears throat> God, it's really noisy here today. Planes, bees, I get it all here, you know. Crap, I might have to just shut my door. The weather is absolutely beautiful, if you can hear me, over the helicopter. It's not a plane, it's a helicopter. Um, the, we the weather is absolutely beautiful today here in Cornwall. And um, I thought I'd keep my door open. But... Oh, weird, what a noisy day. And I forgot it's Thursday today. So on a Thursday, the um, RAF do flybys of their big planes. It must be a training day for them on a Thursday. And, um, yeah. And I can hear the jays and the magpies having a little row outside as well. Every now and again you'll hear them squawking. And the dog, 
and bees. It's going to be one of them days today. Let's just hope. Let's just hope that this tutorial goes on okay. Mind you, it wouldn't be a Janie tutorial if something didn't go off, really. <laughs> or, um, well, at least I haven't got to tell you any funny stories today. Um, everything around me is happening to uh, take care of that for me. I bet you thought, oh, I'm going for a nice, quiet tutorial and do some nice beading with Jane and... All it's been is noise. If it carries on, I'm going to shut the door. How about that? I'll shut the door in a second if it carries on. So we just gradually adding on our beads and our split rings and alter alternating what colours that we put on. If you're unsure about um, making sure that your colours are right, start off with all one colour. They look great, all one colour, as does this one, that's all one colour, and that looks fabulous. So, the design, I'm just giving you some inspiration and showing you the techniques that you need, and then you go ahead and um, use whatever you like and you might even find <sighs> sorry I'm not huffing at you I'm huffing at the traffic blinking lorries right so what day is today Thursday so Monday Sunday night we noted that our water pressure was quite low on the house which isn't always something new. We live in an old cottage in Cornwall, in the Clays, a little place called Ruddlemore. You could probably find it on Google. Um, Wheel Marty Museum isn't far away, where they show you um, how the clay was brought up from the pits and um, how it was processed. And I live in that village. And across the way there is um, still a working clay pit. And every so often, as you heard today, I don't well, I don't know if you heard the siren or not. The sirens will go off, and where they're blasting, and um, then they can get to more clay um, to process. And uh, the wall. The water, like I say, because I went off on a tangent then, didn't I? The water pressure was really low on Sunday night. Monday morning, it was a trickle. So evidently, somebody a bit further up in the village had reported about the water, whether they had none further up, and we were just lucky down here. So Monday, the road got um, dug up. But it just happened to be where the traffic lights are have been put up right at the end of our drive. So they when the lights go on red, obviously you know how traffic <laughs> how traffic lights work. When the lights go on red, all the traffic ends up stopping outside the house. Now believe it or not, this is a, a busy main road. The road's not very wide. Lorries really shouldn't come down here. They need to find an alternate route, really. Um, but, yeah, that's just the way it is, isn't it? So that's the story about the water. Um, the wildlife here is really quite nice. People have told us they've seen foxes in our front garden. And we haven't got a very big garden at all. If you watched my last tutorial, it was just after my birthday, and I think I told you about the ducklings. The duck and the ducklings that came to visit on my birthday. We've only got a very small pond at the front of the house. And, um, yeah, she'd made herself comfortable with her little ducklings in the pond. And had a lovely time. And then decided she was going to move, so the other half had to... Um, stop the traffic and 
the duck and the ducklings toddled across the road to their new home. I haven't seen them since. I have been over um, for a walk because I live on the clay trails <coughs> and it's a nice walking area. And um, yeah, I haven't been able to see them since. I've had snakes in my garden and I really don't do snakes. Really, I'm petrified of wasps. I don't like moths. I can't stand flies. And uh, yeah, I live in the country. Well, in the country, that's a bit of a semi rural. We aren't a village because we've got no post office. We haven't even got a shop. If I want to go to the shop, <coughs> It's um, a couple of miles away, that's all down in the town. As you can see, it's growing nicely and because these are bigger bees, we, do, we don't seem to be using that many. But we'll just keep on going on a bit more because I can see that I'm um, nowhere near finished yet. And you can listen to me rambling on a bit more. Just all we're doing is putting one colour on one side, another colour on the other side with a split ring in between. Like I said before, if you don't have split rings, then um, a jump ring, a nice size jump ring would look good. Experiment guys with what you've got. Now you can actually um, make your own split rings and your own jump rings if you so wished. Um, I haven't got a tutorial on that. Um, but I'm sure there's plenty on YouTube that you could have that you can find to uh, make your own jump rings and your own split rings. And the wire, I forgot to tell you what size the wire was. Um, it's only a very thin wire, so I'd say a 0.4. A 0.4, it needs to be soft and fine and malleable so you can make it into these little needles. Do apologise about that, I, I um, didn't tell you. I'm hoping that um, you have ESP powers and you knew what I was thinking. <laughs> oh dear. There you go. Keeping on then, all we're doing is threading bees. And once you know what you're doing, these bracelets take about, and you're not rabbiting like me and being chased off by um, by wasps. <laughs> then uh, these bracelets take about half an hour to make. Once you've got yourself set up, then you take about half an hour to make. So if you're making, if you've got a craft fair coming up, or a school fete, or um, nice gifts for Christmas, get yourselves ahead, because these are really nice to give as gifts, um, a nice Christmas gift, get ahead of um, get ahead of the game. I'm going to make some packaging for, I have so many bits and bobs that I've got made up, I'm going to make some packaging, I'm just going to make some um, plain card. <coughs> And then I have some plastic wrap with some love hearts on and I'm just going to make some nice little um, gift card. Well it isn't a gift card is it? It's um, packaging. That's the word I'm looking for. Nice bit of packaging for all my makes. But yeah, let's just have a little look at that and see if it fits. Another couple. <coughs> so another couple and then we'll be done guys. And on to the next stage of um, finishing off our bracelet. How easy is this to make? Extremely easy. And yet you look at the finished bracelet and you do wonder to yourself, how has it been made? But now you know.
and these would also be good you know if you've got I don't know half a dozen of um, each colour bead because you can make you could do an ombre you know start off light and work your way through you could do the colours of the rainbows if you've only got um, a few of each colour so let's just have a little look perfect right okay so how to finish then we finish with just a bead we don't need to be putting a split ring on the end we finish with just a bead okay finishing off then we need to make a knot wrapping the cords around our fingers and just bringing those bits of wire through the knot getting our cocktail stick put our cocktail stick in the middle of the loop pull our ends to make our loop smaller making sure that our beads are nice and snug just carry on bringing the knot close to our bead giving it a wiggle taking it off pulling the knot nice and tight separate the cords give it a, a yank and there we have our bracelet so we need to make the closure bit again it's just another knot bringing the cords around popping the wires we still need to keep these wires on guys because we're going to be adding um, beads on the end right. bring our knot where we think it needs to be but not tightening it up getting our closure uh, our closure our bead or our button and seeing if it fits through the hole mine does so I know that's exactly where I want it to be can you see that it fits around our bead so tightening up our knot making it nice and tight taking one of our beads putting it on cutting off our bit of wire but leaving plenty on because we need to tie another knot using our cocktail stick cutting off now this is optional I like to singe the ends of my cording it just stops it fraying okay so I'm just taking a lighter keeping my fingers well away from the end and just melting the end okay on my other side again making a knot bringing the knot down to where we want it to be I 
cutting off access. Giving the end a singe, because that's what I like to do. A bit of stringy thread. And there we have our bracelet finished. How quick and easy was that? Let's just count the beads. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. 29 beads on that one. I'm just going to widen you out a wee bit. So we can... Ooh, I love it. Attempt to put in a putting a bracelet on on camera is uh, no go. Really, you shouldn't do it because they never go on on camera. You come off camera and you can do it without a, a problem, but on camera, there you are, done it. So you can have that at the front or at the back, and there we have our gorgeous bracelet done. Our zigzag bracelet is done. Take that off. With not many supplies at all. There we are. Let's bring these into play. So the sky's the limit then guys and what you can do with these. They are really pretty, they look complicated. I hope I've taken that complication out for you that you uh, can see they're very, very simple to make. A beginner can easily, easily make these. Aren't they just gorgeous? Sparkling in the light, they are beautiful. Really nice, gorgeous. And the color choices, wow. Well, <laughs> just goes on forever doesn't it really so that's it for today's tutorial I hope that you've really enjoyed it I've hoped you enjoyed the giggle along the way laughing at me as I'm sure you were I forgot to tell you about the snakes and uh, maybe I'll save that for next time so um, uh, next tutorial then guys next one up for me is how to make this uh, very simple bracelet using the Par Pucker Amos beads with some seed beads um, but that's for next time so if you'd like to um, see how to do this don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button or bell and you'll be notified of my next upload um, please be warned I am going metal detecting at the weekend so there could well be a detecting video up before my next beading tutorial but we'll see whichever one comes first <laughs> so until next time guys uh, thank you so much for watching if you think that you know somebody would benefit from seeing this video please do think about um, sending them to my channel um, or sharing this video with them or whatever and I hope that you go on to make lots and lots and lots of these gorgeous bracelets until next time